Hello and thanks for watching. My name is Angel Villar and I am a pre-sales engineer in VMware. On this video we will see how to use VMware and NSX in multi-tenant environments. Particularly, we will see how to provide tenant isolation based on different virtual networks. Then we will see how to provide isolation between tenants that share the same virtual networks. Third, we will see how to allow and filter communication between those tenants when they share the same virtual networks. And last, uh, we will see how to provide secure remote access to each of the tenants to their corresponding environment. Let's have a closer look at the demo topology. On the screen we have our production environment, which comprises three different subnets, web, application and database, all of them connected to the NSX distributed router, which in turn connects to the NSX Edge, which is the green router on top. We also have a development environment that uses similar networks web, application and database that connect to the NSX distributed router which again connects to the NSX Edge, the green router on top. If you look at the IP address spaces on both sides you can see that they are the same so we are talking about a true multi-tenant environment with IP overlapping. Then there is the physical side of the topology. We have a physical router which is the blue one that connects to both NSX edges. If you look at the uplink on both NSX Edge you can see that they use a different external IP address. On top right there is also a laptop that we will use for some of the uh, demos, we will see it later. With this topology in mind, let's have a quick review of each of the demos before going into details. First we will see how they are completely isolated from each other without the need of any firewall and rule, just because each environment is using different virtual networks. On the second demo we will move some development VMs to production subnets but we will keep them isolated by means of the NSX distributed firewall. On the third demo we will see how to modify the security policies that apply to the development VMs so that they can now communicate with the production VMs. And we will see how we can do this with NSX without modifying any IP addressing or any switch connectivity. And for the last demo we will recover our initial environment with separated production and development topologies. And we will see how to use the SSL VPN functionality of NSX to provide the end users remote secure access to each of the environments so that they can work with their topologies. First to the production environment and secondly we will see how to access the development environment. So let's go into the demo. We will start by reviewing the configuration of the base topology which as a reminder has two different environments, production and development, that share the same IP address spaces. We will start by reviewing the routing configuration. We can see there are four routers, two for development and two for production, and we will start by checking the development edge which is the router that connects the development environment into the physical network. We can see it has two interfaces, one uplink that actually connects into the physical and one downlink that connects into the NSX distributed router. Routing is very simple, one default gateway and a static routes for internal networks and we can also see that there are two NAT rules configured, one automatically configured by the SSL VPN feature and the second one uh, configured to allow access to the internal VMs into the physical network. We can see that the SSL VPN functionality is enabled. We won't go into much details here, it's just to check that it's on because we will use it in the last demo. Now we will review the configuration of the DLR for development, which is the internal router that is the default gateway for each and every virtual network we create. It has an uplink that connects to the NSX edge and we can see it has three more interfaces, one for each of the virtual networks that exist. Routing again is very simple, it uses uh, a default gateway to the NSX edge and no static routes configured. Next we will move to review the configuration of the edge for production, which is the, again the router that connects the production environment into the physical network. It has one uplink that actually connects into physical and one down downlink that connects to the NSX DLR. Routing again is very simple, default gateway and a static routes for internal and again we will see two not entries, one for the SSL VPN and a second one that allows the internal VMs to get access to the physical. Once more SSL VPN functionality is on but we won't review the details here. So now we can go back and review the configuration for the DLR for production, which is the internal router that is the default gateway for each and every virtual network that we create into the production environment. We can see it has four interfaces with the same IP addressing that the DLR for development, so we are using a true multi-tenant environment here. Routing again is very simple, just a default uh, route to the NSX edge and no static routes. 
Now we are done with the routing configuration, so let's review the virtual networks that exist. We can see that there are four logical switches for development and four more for production. There is one per tier plus an extra one, the transit switch, that allow us to interconnect the NSX edge with the NSX distributed router. Let's review the membership of each of these switches. We can see that in the development web switch we have the development web VM. Similarly, in the development app switch we will find the development app VM. And finally, in the development database switch we will find the development database VM. The same works for the production switches. We will see how in the production web switch we can find the production web VM. The same with the production app switch, where we can find the production app VM. And the same again for the production database switch, where we can find the production database VM. This concludes the base configuration review, so we'll now move into the demo. The first demo shows how to keep isolation between both environments without the need for any specific firewall rule, just because each environment uses different virtual networks. Let's start by reviewing the firewall configuration, where we can see that the default rule is configured for allow all traffic. We can also see that there are two rules that would block traffic between production and development environments, but we will use these rules later, but for now they are disabled, meaning they have no impact in our configuration. We can see that inside the development environment all traffic is allowed, no filters based on protocol, while on the production environment we are being more restrictive and we only allowed ICMP and SSH. We now jump into the production web VM CLI, we can check its IP address and we will try to reach the development app VM. We can see that despite both being on the same IP subnet traffic fails. Next we will try to reach the production app VM which is in a different subnet and traffic goes through and not only ICMP but also SSH which SSH is allowed because of the default rule of the firewall being set to allow all traffic. We can see how actually the hostname changes and then we close the session to continue with the next text which is to try to reach the development app VM. Again we can see that traffic does not go through, is not allowed because both environments use different virtual networks. Last test is to try to reach the production database VM. We can see that ping works and we will try SSH which again works and we can see how the hostname changes into the production web VM. We close the session and we continue the test by moving into the development web VM. We check its IP address and we try to reach the production web VM which is on the same IP subnet but we will see how traffic fails. Second test is to try to reach the development app VM which ping works, it's expected so far and also the SSH. In this case it works because it's allowed inside the development environment plus the default rule also allows this traffic. Hostname changes from one to the other. We close the session and we launch the third test which is to try to reach the production app VM. We launch the ping and we can see how it fails. Last test is to try to reach the development database VM. This is a very important test because the database VM has the same IP addressing on both environments. So we can ping the database VM and we, if we do an SSH we can see how now we are accessing the development database VM and not the production database VM. So even when we have IP address overlapping everything works as expected. On the second demo we will see how to provide isolation by using the NSX distributed firewall. For that, we move the web and app development VMs into the production switches and we will see how, despite that, the NXX distributed firewall can help us keeping isolation. We will start by enabling rules 9 and 10 on the firewall. These are the rules that pro will provide isolation between production and development despite VMs being on the same subnets. And we can check membership of these groups. Production group has all the production VMs, web, app and database and the development group has all the development VMs, web, app and database too. And we can see how the rule is configured to block traffic. Next we move into the logical switches section where we will assign the development app and web VMs into the production web switch. So we select the production web switch, we select the button app VM, we check the development web VM and we can see how it's been moved from the development web switch into the production web switch. 
we accept and then we do the same for the production app switch we select it, we check the add VM button we select the development app VM and again we can see how it's moved from the development app switch into the production app switch and we accept now we will check that membership is as expected we double click on the production web switch and we can see it has now two VMs production and development web VMs and the same works for the production app switch we double click on it and we can see it has two VMs both the production and development app VMs so next is moving into the VMs themselves to continue testing we start on the development web VM where we try to ping the production app VM they are on the same switch, they are on the same IP subnet but traffic does not go through because the NSX distributed firewall does not allow it we try to ping next to the production app VM which, and, and again it fails again the NSX distributed firewall is blocking traffic between development and production if we try to ping the development app VM it works despite being on the same subnet and the same IP segment as the production app VM because the NSX firewall is blocking traffic between production and development but is allowing traffic inside each of both environments on the third demo we are going to see how to change group membership to allow communication between production and development VMs that are on the same IP subnet and on the same logical switch we start with the same topology as on demo 2 where production VMs belong to the production group and development VMs belong to the development group which is the key for the firewall to keep isolation between both environments but we are now moving the development web and app VMs into the production group and we will do this without modifying IP addressing or switch membership and we will see how easy it is and how that effectively changes the security policies that apply to these development web VMs we start but by going into the NSX manager configuration and particularly we need to find the security tag configuration security tags is one of the multiple methods of NSX to assign VMs into groups that can be then used into the firewall policies so we will start by removing the development app VM from the development app tag and then we will edit the production app tag to add the development app VM as it can be seen on the screen we will do the same now for the development web VM so first we remove the VM from the tag as it's on the screen now and secondly we edit the production web VM tag and we add the development web VM as it can be seen on the screen so now we go back into the firewall configuration and we will check the VM to group membership we can see how now in the production group there are five VMs which are the three production VMs plus the development web and development app VMs and we will see how in the development group there is only the development web database VM we jump back into the development web VM CLI and we can check its IP address and we will see how it now can ping the production web VM which previously failed it will also be able to ping the production app VM which failed in demo 2 it keeps pinging the development app VM which is expected and we will try to reach the production database VM it pings and we will run an SSH and we will see how now the development web VM is accessing the production database VM and not the development database VM so effectively again the IP address overlapping is working as expected in the last demo, demo 4, we will see how to use the SSL VPN functionality of NSX to provide secure remote access to each of the environments. We recover the original topology with production VMs belonging to the production environment and development VMs belonging to the development environment and we will then use the SSL functionality to access first the production environment and second the development one. We start by checking that we have recovered the original topology. We can see that in the development web switch we only have the development web VM we can see that in the development app switch we only have the development app VM and we will see that the same works for the production switches on the production web switch we only have the production web VM and on the production app switch we only have the production app VM we will now move to the external laptop on the top right corner of the small window for the rest of the tests from this laptop we access the URL of the production Edge, which offers us the SSL VPN functionality. We log in as a production SSL VPN user and we get access to download 
the client to set up the secure connection. We will cancel because in our case has been already installed. The same works for the development edge which offers a URL to access the SSL VPN portal. We log in as a development SSL VPN user and we get access to install the client that will set up the secure connection into the development edge. We cancel because in our case has been also been installed. We open a CLI on this laptop, we check its IP address and we can see that it's uh, external to the NSX environment. And now we start using the SSL VPN client. So we have two profiles, one for production and another to development. We log into the production one, which set up the secure connection into the production edge. We use our production user ID with our password. And as soon as we get connected, we can see how we have a new interface on the laptop with IP address 10.10.10.2. So now we will start a few pings into our production environment. We can ping the production web VM. Next we ping the production database VM, which is the one with overlapping IP addressing. It works. And next we will run some SSH connections first to the production web VM. We can see that it works and that we get the hostname of the production web. And secondly, we will try the production database VM. We launch the SSH, again it works, and again we get the host name of the production database VM. Last, we will try some pings into the development environment, first to the development web VM, and we can see how it fails, as expected. And secondly, we will try the ping into the development app VM, and again we will see that it fails, again as expected. Now we will switch connections. We first log out from the production SSL VPN and we can see how the interface disappeared, the 10.10.2. .10 and we will use the second profile on the SSL VPN client to connect into the development edge. We log in as a development user and we will see how as soon as we are connected we get again the additional interface but now with a different IP addressing. Now it's 20.20.20.3. .20 so we are connecting into the development environment and we will run some tests. First, we see how we can ping the development app VM. Second, we can see how we can ping the development web VM. And also we can ping the development database VM. But since it has IP address overlapping with the production database VM, we will restart the SSH session to check that effectively we are connecting into the development database VM and not the production database VM. Lastly, we are going to check that we cannot connect into the production environment. So we run some pings first to the production web VM and it fails as expected and then we run another ping against the production app VM which also fails again as expected. And this test concludes the last demo of this video. Just for recap, we have seen how to use NSX in multi-tenant environments to provide tenant isolation based on virtual networks without the need for any firewall rule. We have then seen how to provide isolation between tenants that share the same virtual networks using the firewall of NSX. Then we have changed the configuration in order to allow communication between both tenants. And lastly, we have seen how to use the SSL VPN functionality of NSX to provide secure remote access to each of the environments. On the screen you can see some links where to find further information. The VMware hands-on labs are particularly interesting because these are live environments free to use where you can run topologies like the one we have seen on this video, not only for NSX but for a wide variety of VMware products. So again, thanks for watching and hope you have enjoyed this demo.